India Legal presents Courts Roundup. Hello, I am Tanya Chuk and you are watching Courts Roundup. In this program, we bring you the latest legal news and details of court proceedings. Before we begin, here are the headlines. Supreme Court rules that farmers' protest is legitimate but can't go on without talks and can't endanger lives. Suggest to put the laws on hold, centre says not possible. Supreme Court upholds Allahabad High Court order which had quashed Dr. Kafil Khan's detention under the NSA, dismissing the UP government's appeal against the order. Supreme Court grants interim protection from arrest to film and TV producer Ekta Kapoor. Matter relates to charges of spreading obscenity through web series. Supreme Court asked Republic TV and its editor-in-chief Arnab Goswami to approach the Bombay High Court with his petition in the TRP scam case. India Legal presents Courts Roundup. The Supreme Court heard a bunch of petitions seeking removal of farmers who are protesting at Delhi border against Farmer Act. The Supreme Court said the ongoing farmers' protest can continue till it does not destroy property or endanger life. Court suggested to form an independent committee suggesting names of P. Sainath, Bharatiya Kisan Union and others as members. The Supreme Court also suggested that the central government put the implementation of the new farm laws on hold adding that it will enable negotiations with farmers. However, the centre argued that if the enactment is put on hold, the farmers will not come forward for negotiations. The Supreme Court had said that the farmer protesting near Delhi cannot block a city. The remarks were made by Chief Justice of India, S.A. Bobde while hearing a petition seeking to remove protesting farmer from Delhi border areas. The Supreme Court suggested that the central government put the implementation of a new farm law on hold, adding that it will be enable negotiation with farmer. However, the centre urged that if the enchantment is put on hold, the farmer will not come forward for negotiation. Attorney General K.K. Venugopal, who was representing the government, said he get back to the court on the issue after discussion. Hearing the issue of road blockage during the farmer protest, the Supreme Court said it would refer the matter to a vacation bunch and suggested that the government not take any action to implement the law till the court takes a final decision on the issue. We make it clear that we recognize the fundamental right to protest against a the law. There is no question of balancing or crucialing it, but it should not damage anyone's life or property, said Chief Justice S.A. Bobre. Justice Bobde, who said yesterday that the matter must be handed over to a committee, said it must be have independent members with knowledge of agriculture and hear both sides and give report on what is to be done. The independent committee can have P. Sainath, Bharti Kisan Union and others as a member. You cannot instigate violence and cannot block a city like this, CGI Bobde further said. Attorney General K.K. Venugopal said that the farmers are violating COVID-19 guidelines which could lead to spread of infection in their village. None of them wear a face mask. They sit together in a large number. COVID-19 is a concern. They will visit village and spread it there. Farmers cannot violate the fundamental right of others. Former Union Minister P. Chitambram, who was representing the Delhi government, said, if you make so many amendments, the original law is untraceable. The farmer says this law is not acceptable, so bring a new law and let parliament discuss. Senior advocate Hari Salve, who was representing one of the petitioner, said no right is absolute, from right to protest to right to movement. The content of right to free speech, it includes the right to know, but it cannot extend the right to privacy. 
the right protest does not extend to any others to exercise their right. He added fundamental right to protest cannot extend to holding a city to ransom. The Chief Justice said protest can continue without violence and the police will not do anything to stop the protest. On Wednesday, the top court had issued a notice to the centre and others. The centre has told Supreme Court that it will not do anything against the interest of farmer. Fair report. The Supreme Court has dismissed Uttar Pradesh government's appeal against Allahabad High Court's decision to set aside detention of Dr. Kafil Khan under National Security Act. The court said that observations made by Allahabad High Court in its September 1 decision will not impact the outcome of the criminal cases against Khan. These cases, the bench said, will be decided on its own merit. The Supreme Court has upheld an Allahabad High Court order which had quashed Dr. Kafil Khan's detention under the National Security Act, dismissing the Uttar Pradesh government's appeal against the order. A three-judge bench of Chief Justice of India, S.A. Bobde and Justices A.S. Bopanna and V. Rama Subramaniam said that there was no reason to interfere with the September 1 order of the High Court which had set aside Khan's detention. The court, however, clarified that other criminal cases against Khan will be decided on its own merits. A division bench of Chief Justice Govind Mathur and Justice Somitra Dayal Singh of the Allahabad High Court had allowed the writ petition filed on behalf of Dr. Khan by his mother, Nuzhat Parveen, and quashed Khan's detention. Dr. Khan was detained under NSA and lodged in Mathura jail for an allegedly Provocative speech at the Aligarh Muslim University in the backdrop of protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act. Interestingly, the High Court had noted in its judgment that contrary to claims by the state that Khan's speech called for violence and hatred, it actually called for national integrity and unity. Parveen had initially approached the Supreme Court which asked her to move the High Court. Since the listening of case before High Court got delayed, the Supreme Court on August 11 asked the High Court to decide the plea within 15 days. In light of the fact that this matter involved Khan's personal liberty, the same must be disposed of expeditiously the top court had ordered. Subsequently, the Allahabad High Court had promptly taken up the case and ordered Khan's release. The High Court had found that Prima Feki, Dr. Khan's speech, does not disclose any effort to promote hatred or violence, it also nowhere threatens peace and tranquility of the city of Aligarh. The address gives a call for national integrity and unity among the citizens. The speech also deprecates any kind of violence. Bureau Report For more updates, we have Advocate Shivam Sharma with us. Shivam, tell us about the court proceedings in this case. Yes, in this case. And the court has said that the criminal cases will be decided on their own merit. The observation in a preventive detention judgment cannot impact criminal prosecution. Earlier in this case, the Allahabad High Court has said that the speaker was certainly opposing the policies of the government and while doing so, certain illustrations are given by him. But that no one reflects the eventualities demanding detention. A complete reading of the speech prima facie does not disclose any effect to promote hatred or violence. It also says that no way threatens peace and tranquility of the city of Aligarh. The address given a call for national integrity and unity among the citizens. The Allahabad High Court uh, has uh, concluded that there was no ground to either detain Khan. In this regard, the Apex Court today refused to interfere with Allahabad High Court order saying that it seems to be a good order by High Court. We see no reason to interfere with the High Court order. Yes. Thank you, Shivam, for joining us. Supreme Court has asked Republic TV and, ed and its editor-in-chief Arnab Goswami to approach the Bombay High Court with his petition in the TRP scam case. Mumbai police has opposed Republic TV and Arnab Goswami's petition in Supreme Court over the summons issued to channels officials in connection with the TRP investigation. In its affidavit, Mumbai police had said that they seek rejection of the petition with a heavy penalty imposed on the petitioners. The Supreme Court has refused to entertain a writ petition filed by ARG Outlier Media Limited. 
which runs Republic TV channel against a FIR registered by the Mumbai police against its editor and reporters for allegedly trying to cause disaffections among member of the police personnel a bench headed by CGI SA Bobde asked the petitioners to approach the Bombay High Court as the entire cause of action has risen in Maharashtra the petition has been dismissed as withdrawn with liberty to approach Bombay High Court Republic TV and its employee were booked by the Mumbai police for allegedly defaming the service and trying to cause disaffection among member of the police personnel. The FIR was registered at NK Joshi Mark Police Station under Section 31 of Police Incitement to Disaffection Act 1922 and under Section 500 Defamation of IPC on a complaint filed by Sub Inspector Shashikant Pawar of the Special Branch. The channel had sought quashing of this FIR, stating that the channel was only reporting the view expressed by a certain right-minded member of the political dispensation in Maharashtra as well as within the police forces in Mumbai against. the brazen manner in which parambir singh had conducted himself senior advocate siddharth bhatnagar appearing for arg outlier submitted that the petitioner also challenges the police incitement to disaffection act 1922 as been unconstitutional and violative of article 191a 191g and 21 of the constitution At this juncture the CGI asked the petitioner as to why it had not approached the high court the Bombay high court has already upheld the constitutionality of the act but Nagar responded unconvinced by this submission the CGI said that the entire cause of action has risen in Maharashtra and therefore the parties must first approach the Bombay high court the petition was accordingly dismissed as withdrawn with liberty to approach the high court bureau report Supreme Court has granted protection from arrest to film and TV producer Ekta Kapoor in relation to an FIR registered by Annapurna Police regarding the transmission of an episode in web series named XXX Uncensored 5 which is being promoted by Alt Balaji a concern owned by her and her mother the bench headed by Chief Justice S A Bobde was hearing a petition filed by Kapoor against the order passed by Madhya Pradesh High Court which refused to quash the FIR against her Kapoor has been booked under sections 294 and 298 and 34 of the Indian Penal Code among other sections. A single bench of justice Shailendra Shukla observed that in order to determine as to whether a particular matter is obscene or not, recording of evidence may be an important exercise. The court was hearing an application under section 482 of CRPC filed by Ekta Kapoor seeking quashing of FIR filed against her for allegedly spreading obscenity hurting religious feelings and improper use of national emblems in a web show xxx season 2 kapoor had moved the high court stating that she did not have any knowledge of the contents of the episode because she is not the producer or director and her name is not reflected in the credits of the episode rejecting this argument the high court held that kapoor being the managing director of the platform on which the show was released she is presumed to have knowledge about the contents of the episode The Supreme Court has said that it will pass orders tomorrow that is on Friday in the contempt of court petitions against stand up comedian Kunal Kamra and cartoonist Rachita Taneja for their tweets criticizing the top court a three judge bench of justices Ashok Bhushan R Subhash Reddy and M R Shah heard advocate Nishant for less than a minute before it said that it will pass an order tomorrow Kamra was unrepresented in court on Thursday The court was hearing a bunch of petitions seeking initiation of contempt of court proceedings against Kamra and Taneja. On November 12, Attorney General K K Venugopal had granted permission to initiate contempt of court proceedings against Kamra based on complaints from various law students and lawyers who had drawn the attention of the law officer to four tweets by Kamra. According to the Contempt of Courts Act 1971, a private individual can file a contempt of court petition in the Supreme Court only after obtaining the consent of the Attorney General or the Solicitor General. Similar consent has to be obtained from the concerned Advocate General of the state when filing a contempt petition before a high court. Protesting is the constitutional right of the people but it should not become a precedent to pr- protest in a residential area the delhi high court said while hearing a plea against the delhi police for allowing a protest in civil lines delhi the court said protest means people come and go but it does not mean to keep a sit in or dharna 
Justice Sanjeev Sachdeva was hearing the plea filed by Civil Lines Residents Association seeking contempt action against Delhi Police for allowing protests to be held in the area, causing problems in traffic movement. The Delhi High Court asked Gautam Advocate Narayan, appearing for Delhi Police to seek instructions and make arrangements as protesting is a right, but it might be problematic to protest in a residential colony. Justice Sachdeva stated, Public functionaries deal with several people. If this is permitted, today it is peaceful. Tomorrow it might get worse. Today is 11th day. The bench has listed the matter for further hearing on December 18. Delhi High Court has held that integrity of women who has alleged sexual harassment at workplace cannot be belittled or slighted on sexual harassment probe. It said that internal complaints committee is intended as a platform to provide an environment of confidence to the complainant. The Delhi High Court has held that the credibility of a woman alleging sexual harassment at workplace is not diminished because of pending disciplinary proceedings against her. The court has further held that the absence of eyewitnesses also cannot take away the credibility of the complainant, clarifying that the complainant's statement is to be considered independently to determine whether it has a ring of truth or not, the court remarked. The Internal Complaints Committee is intended as a platform to provide an environment of confidence to the complainant. It is to believe her and not compel her to name witnesses to seek corroboration, as has happened in the instant case. The perpetrator seeks out his target without putting himself in the danger of being caught and preserving a your word against mine situation, which the women would possibly find difficult to surmount before an inquiry committee. A judgment to this effect was passed by a division bench of Justices Rajiv Sahai and Law and Asha Menon while dealing with an appeal against an order passed by a single judge bench. The single judge had imposed cost of rupees 50,000 on the appellant and complainant after concluding that the sexual harassment complaint made by her against a fellow employee who was the accused was false. Before the single judge, the appellant had challenged the Internal Complaint Committee ICC's order holding inter ally that the sexual harassment allegation could not be established during the inquiry. While the court agreed to set aside the cost of 50,000 rupees and the direction for initiation of disciplinary proceedings against the appellant, it did not deem it appropriate to direct an independent departmental inquiry against the accused on account of his retirement. Before parting, the court nonetheless recorded certain pertinent observations on sexual harassment at the workplace and gender conditioning of men. Acknowledging women as valuable human resource, the court remarked, it is gender conditioning that leads men to abuse, ill-treat or become violent toward women or treat them disparagingly and with condescensions, the court added. The court further opined that there was a need to not only comply with the Porsche Act but also understand how a sexually harassed woman felt. Bureau Report in a major setback to Chief Minister Udav Thakre, led Maharashtra government, the Bombay High Court passed an interim order staying the October 1 order by Mumbai Suburban District Collector that transferred 102 acres of land to the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority to build a metro car shed. The court was hearing a petition filed by the centre which has claimed the land belonged to it. Car shed was being developed at the Kanjur Mark. The Bombay High Court has directed an interim stay on the transfer of 102 acres of land at Kanju Marg to the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority MMRDA for carrying out work toward the Metro Rail Project Metro Car Shed. The order was passed on a plea filed by central government claiming ownership over said portion of land. The bench of Chief Justice Dipankar Datta and Justice G.S. Kulkarni issued the stay after granting the collector a chance to withdraw his order allotting the land under dispute and to decide on the matter only after granting an opportunity of hearing to the centre and private parties who had approached the High Court challenging the same order. The court expressed on Monday that the collector's order had not considered the pending suits, nor made any reference to it. On Wednesday, a new fact was brought to the court's attention that the state had applied to acquire 
102 acres of the land which was allegedly in dispute from one Suresh Bafna who claimed to own a portion of land in Kanjur Marg. The court made it clear the state that they will have to wait for a decision of their application. The bench also indicated that it was not inclined to let the collector's order remain on record. After hearing the parties briefly on the issue of withdrawing the order and after they were clearly informed by Kumbhakoni that he will withdraw the order only conditionally, the court deemed it best to stay the operation of the order till they finally hear all parties involved in the dispute over the plot of land. MMRDA had transferred the land to Delhi Metro Rail Corporation Limited, which was subsequently conducting soil testing on the land. Before the dispute reached the High Court, the court has now also restrained DMRCL from carrying out its ongoing operations on the land till the plea is finally heard. The Metro car shed was originally planned to be developed at RA Colony last year, which triggered widespread protest and petition before the Bombay High Court, the Supreme Court. After the Shiv Sena-led coalition government came into power later that year, 800 acres of RA area was declared as a reserved forest and the state decided to develop the car shed at Kanjurmarg instead. Bureau Report That's all for Courts Roundup. Keep watching APN. India Legal presents Courts Roundup. Thank <laughs> you.